Oh no. We're uh, gonna, you don't really want to see my head, you want to see the job, but anyway. Yeah, half and half, how's that? Uh, I'm gonna change the boot on my CV rear axle. It's just got the slightest split right at the edge of the belt, right at the edge of the strap. Where the strap straps it on, stainless steel strap, so it's really annoying. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll grab some tools out and we're gonna have a go at doing it. So I wanna make sure I've got all those tools with me when I go on trips, so. We'll get all the tools out and I'll make sure they're all in my tool bag that I take away with me. Oh yeah. Ugh. Oh yeah, right there. And that'll come off there. Oh yeah, you're right. Now we're cooking with gas. So if I do that, I don't know how I'll get this one off yet. I'm gonna try the same way. Look at that. There you go. Wasn't that hard, was it? Mmm. Oh, hey. Because this is when I broke it down at coughs. I thought it was this, and it was actually the um, drive shaft. Well, it doesn't like being at that angle. Ooh, yuck. Anyway, I'll clean it up a bit. I might see if I can get that back cover off, maybe. I'm not sure if it's in behind there. Because there should be a circlip on the back of the CV part of the joint so that this axle can slide out the middle of it, I would have thought. While I was doing the lift, I got I got it done it on track at Springwood. He was the recommended guy up here to do the lift. And I asked him about the CV boots and said I would like them changed for the better ones. Apparently the OEM ones split, so I got them changed. Just notice it's got a cable tie on there, which is funny. Anyway, how's this though? The young bloke bought a uh, tripod, it's handy. I oh, know, cut that cable tie off. Uh, this strap here, oh, this is a normal looking one here, right? I know these ones. Doesn't it easily fold over? I don't want to damage this one because this one's actually okay. There you go. Once again, I didn't use the tools out of my bag. So, oh yeah. No, side cutters were in there. Happy days. Right. This is getting messy. Let's get some of this stuff. clean up. I'm sure someone's going to tell me I'm doing this wrong. But I sort of like learning the hard way I think. So my theory is I've got to punch that out. That's just like a cap. Oh, I can't see it. That there's a cap in the end and in there will be the circuit I reckon. All right, I'll move it over here. You see that? Yeah, there we go. And I'm thinking I just go like this. Coming out? Yeah, that's coming out. There we go. Right out. It's pretty, pretty yucky. Ah, ha! Look at the grease in that. That looks like it's been all wet. I'm so sort of glad I pulled this apart now. That's not a good look. That's not a good colour grease. It should be black like that. Not ideal. So that split's probably been there for long enough just to suck some water in. There you go. Tiny split, well worth changing it. See, there'll be a circlip just there. Here we go. Right, we're on. I'll try and get that all together. Ugh. Ugh. Shit everywhere. I really hope there's someone who's done this on YouTube. I couldn't find it. 
I tried to YouTube how to change one of these boots. I couldn't find it, so I thought I'd do this, but um, I really hope someone does a better one because I don't really know what I'm doing. My theory is always, if I was out the bush and had to do it, would I be able to with my gear on my car? I'll give this a good clean out when it's part in fuel or whatever and put it back together nice and clean which you'd have fuel out the bush so you have to do it in mum's washing up basket so she'd be stoked with that right circle clip where is it oh yeah oh it's a proper one with little holes how good is that right put you over try and keep the shit out of that one as much as i can right here sure clip oh uh, back to the toolbox. I've got one shitty set of circlip pliers. Oh, they're horrible too. Look at them. I've only got one. Oh, I've got two. Well, that might be right. If you didn't have them, you could probably use long nose or something stupid. After a few beers, you'd be able to work out a way to do it, I reckon. The stupid thing is, even if you carry a one with you, hold these backwards for anyway, uh, even if you carry a CV boot with you, you'd pull up somewhere where there'd be a garage or whatever, or Birdsville Auto or someone that would then be able to fix it. Whereas if you don't have a spare, they're not going to have a spare. So even if you're not going to do it out of the bush, at least have one with you, I reckon. So if you're halfway through a trip, you can ring your head and order one if you had to, but. Hopefully, you'd have one on board. It does go far enough. There you go. It's going to be shitty little uh, circuit pliers work. Now, that now, I'll leave that in there with all the other cap. Ugh. I really need to clean up. Rushy, rushy, rushy. Right. Should be coming off there now, I would imagine. Might give it a little uh, Well, there you go. Voila. Now, before I clean it out and put it back together and regrease it, I'm going to change this. Because otherwise, it would be just my luck. I'd put it back together and go, whoops. check oh yeah I just got these through super cheap GSP it's upside down and it's back to front okay I'll read it CVB so CV boot is it still backwards yeah cause this 1167 so GSP, CVB, now this is the rear inner, but I've got a feeling the outer is the same. I think that's actually the same. I'll check the part numbers, but I'm pretty sure they're both the same. There's got a bit of grease on it to help that go in. You know the fun part about doing this out the bush would be keeping it all clean. That would be annoying. I could probably put this in the vice, but I'm not going to have a vice out in the bush. All I'm going to have is mum's cooking table. Mum's not going to be very happy. One thing I'm not going to have for sure is the proper tool to do a CV boot. But if they're light and they're not too heavy, or you know, if they're not too heavy and they not too expensive, I might just chuck one in the kit. Um, needed anyway, I just don't like cutting too much crap that I don't need around. Right, hey. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good, that one. That's nice. Right, hey. Happy days. 
Um, what's Google to see how much you're meant to put in there? I'm not actually sure how much you're meant to put in there, but I'm going to wash this one out with fuel first, so I'll get some shit ready to do that. I've got a tray here. I've got a heap of spray and stuff and WD and then contact cleaners. Anything like that, brake clean, just clean it all out. Obviously make sure it's really dry before you put your new grease in. Your grease comes with your CV, <laughs> genuine grease for CVs, genuine for who, anyway. Uh, your kit comes with grease, that makes it easy, I'm gonna cut it. So I'll just keep cleaning this, you don't watch that, that's boring. So I've just been down to my young bloke's carport. He's got lots of stock. So, because I'm using this for this, I don't know how many other jobs you need it for, but it's sort of probably handy if you're doing big travels to have one anyway. Have a bit of this stuff with you. This is really good for lighting fires as well, obviously. Just saying. And then we've got that for cleaning up afterwards, so. Win-win, and I didn't pay for it. Wow, that does a good job. I stopped using that. I was using paper towel for a minute, but it's really crap. The paper towel. I've been spraying the degrees of strain to this. And yeah, does a good job. I use that paper towel, but it's very linty and it comes off in, yeah, it's not good. So I've gone back to this proper paper towel. I think it's probably lint free or something. It's actually Caterpillar stuff, this one, but we haven't all got that. And then, that thing just opened my bath, I'll just, Yeah, I know you haven't got compressed air. Well, some of you might actually, if you've got endless air or whatever, but you've got compressed air out the bush, but I'm gonna blow it out a little bit anyway. Right out, the fun part. Reassemble it all, put the circlip on while it's not greasy, then pack it with grease. So, don't need them on. I do need that on. Right. So we're good for that. Towel under everything. Are you barking at dog? Oi, come here. What's going on? Relax. Got to smear a bit of grease on that so it goes in easier. Right, oh, yeah. Anything soft's good. Obviously, you put that in far enough so you can see your groove, which I can't yet. Make sure when you put this on and you're out the bush and you've had a couple of beers, you don't lose it. That would be annoying. Yep. 
As soon as it's in, you give it a wobble and you can see it in between the splines. Well, good, right, eh? Now the fun part. Grease time. It's going to get coated up pretty quick when it starts to move anyway. I might just throw a little bit in the other end. If I can. There you go, that was fun. Quite an easy job. And today I'd rather do it in the shed with the beer. If you had to do it up the bush, it wouldn't be the end of the world, especially if you're away and it's like first day into a, you know, five or six day off grid, you'd certainly spend an hour pulling this out and doing it. I actually carry a spare one now. I actually carry a spare rear axle. Since we went to 35 nittos, I just carry one. So if you carry one, you just have your exchange and then you can do the boot at your, at your leisure. I don't run a front locker, so I only, run a, I only carry a rear CV. Be interesting to see if I should be carrying both. I know the rears side for side is fine. Um, but yeah, I don't carry a front one. Right that Slop central. Now I reckon when you put these bands on, see that other one was split right up against the edge of the band. It was split right in here. So I'm wondering if you don't put it back a little bit away from the bend. I'll have a look when I'm putting them on, see if we can sort of space them slightly away from that edge. Although this one's a different shape. It actually looks better already. Right, if we go borrow a tool now, I can put this bottom end back on though. We'll do that quickly. Put the bottom dust cover back on. Hmm. Oh, maybe. Uh. anyway because once it's in it's up against the uh, flange the drive flange that comes out of the diff here we go it's funny now I look at these and they say the OEM ones are a bit ordinary if that's the OEM one which I'm guessing it is it had the original clamps on it they're very they just they're like really stiff plastic compared to that that's like rubber this is nearly like plastic Yeah, that's like D minor and that's G. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why they break. There you go. Um, yeah. Waiting on tools. I'll be back. I'm back. Hey, dog. All right. I managed to get these new um, CV boot straps from uh, Repco. Now... I actually tried a couple of things. I've heard these work okay. Stainless steel cable ties. They're actually too weak. By the time you pull them up, you could bend them over. There's no real way to hold them, but they've got a little grippy bit in there, which I won't. Oh, waste one, what the hell. But you put that in. If you put that in, it grips on itself. And that's all good. And we tried pulling these up as tight as we can, even with the proper CV boot strap tool. But they don't grip. They actually pull back a bit. I'm not going to try and do it because I'm going to cut my hand, but yeah, you can, they pull back and they weren't actually tight enough. So I've got some of these. These are like $2.50 each at Repco. Now, ideal to buy some and have them in your kit because even if you haven't um, done a CV boot and don't need, to, don't need to change one, I pulled the other end off to see what it looked like and the grease was actually in okay condition. But what amazed me was this one here where that grease looked murky when I full, first pulled it out, it was like that grey colour and looked like obviously had water in it. Even when that tiny little split had water in it, 
it was horrible. The CV felt horrible and grippy and grindy. It just felt crap. And now it feels mint. So there you go. Um, the other thing to watch is when you put these back on, there's actually a groove there. Ooh. There's that groove there that ideally when that's on and you pull the strap down, it sort of pushes the rubber into that a bit. The OEM one, which is horrible plasticky thing, actually has a bit of a groove there. There's actually a groove, like a, a lump, if you like, that sits in that slot. These ones don't have that, but I'm pretty sure it's going to sit nice anyway, so we'll have a play. And we'll just give it a bit of a tug afterwards to make sure it does actually sit okay. <laughs> um, make sure it does sit okay. So all on firm all the way around i'd like it to go right to that lip but it doesn't that bit there's just narrower than the standard one by a couple of mil anyway i'm gonna put this on now i actually cheated last night and a mate came around and was actually a mechanic and lent me his tool which is this little sucker so how this works we slide that in there we put that that way that bit's out, so you got more room. You got, like, if it was in there, you wouldn't have room to move it, so we'll put that in there. We pull it up reasonably tight by hand, remembering that I actually want to put it on the out, on that edge, so it is somewhere near that groove. Now, I'm sure there's people out there who probably have done these before and probably doing better than this, but basically what this thing does, um, Mate showed me how to do this bit. He said you pull it up reasonably tight. I'm gonna go like this. Put that slot thing on there. I pull it up tight. Just make sure it's all seated. And it's all even all the way around. It looks pretty good. And you bend that over like that. You get a 13 mil ringy. And as you wind it on, you feel it tension quite tight. I'm just going to check that it's sitting in properly all the way around and it is it all looks quite even now you pull that and as you feel it you feel it just tensioning and you sort of feel it you go oh yeah you sort of feel it squash that rubber without being overly tight when you're happy with the tension you fold that up like that take it off now that locks that on that's actually locked on you'll see i'll pull that out now If it'll come out, yep. Wiggle that away, and you can see that's actually locked on there. So what you do now, you see this still? My finger's in the way, my finger's in the way. But anyway, I'm just tapping that bit down. So what mate showed me he does, let's just turn that down a bit. How do we lower that? How's this lower? Mm -hmm. That one? That, or this one? Uh, you gotta look at my head, you'd rather look at that, right. Right. So, we'll just tap that down there. He actually puts a score mark across it. He just said it's a thing he does. And he's done a lot more of them than me, so I go, why not? Then, he's got these two tabs. It's all pretty, pretty obvious when you're doing it. You've got these two tabs here, which are, let's get this close up. So we've just tapped that down to lock it on. Just pull these tabs in a bit with a pair of pliers. And then there you go. So I think I need to clean my bench. Then you happy with that? Then you just use this thing to and fatigue will just snap that off oh, at the wrong spot. That's okay, we don't mind. Oh, yeah, I was ready to go anyway. So there you go. So that's the CV boots on. Obviously, I had to do the same for that one and that one. So I use those as practice ones. Or make sure me on one. So, as I said, I actually took this one back off and had a look at it. Now, that's an aftermarket one as well. So, that one was put on by... 
on the track. I might try and get the part number because it looks it actually looks slightly different than this one. So I might chase them both up. I might just monitor them and see which one works best, and then I'll know. But as we said, this one was GSP boot kit. IATF certified, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we'll see how it goes, though. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to actually go throw this shaft back in because it's all nearly greased and the one on my car has a slight split. So then I can pull that one off and do the same deal. But in the meantime, I know that this shaft is okay. And I said, that feels so much better than just having that wet grease in there. I'm actually quite amazed at the amount. So I'm going to throw a couple of them in because even if your boot's not split and you want to take it off and inspect the grease and just see what the grease is like, um, Obviously, obviously you need to put these back on afterwards, so you can't really do it without cutting these off and putting new ones on. Yeah, so no luck with the stainless steel cable ties. They're reasonably cheap. I think I paid 35 bucks or something for a boot. So I'm going to see how they go. They're way more flexible than the standard ones. I'm going to buy one. This is not mine. I'm going to go buy one today from Repco and keep it in my kit because we try doing it a few other ways. It just doesn't really work. These just work well. Like... You can just put it right on, do it up with this banner, kink it, and it's just easy. So it's worth having one. I think they're, the Repco version, this is called a Bandit, this one. The Repco version is 50 bucks retail, so I'm just going to go grab one. That's it. Boot's changed. I'm going to change this shaft because it needs to be changed anyway. Same deal, then bend it back up over this way. Chinese puzzle, there you go, right, pull the bits in here, there, cap comes off, now, that's just the retaining device, right here, this is where it tends to fun, last time, I had to make up this because of our little incident around the bush, we couldn't get it undone, so I haven't tested it yet, placing this out of the bush, it was a bugger to get undone, Oh, that was a lot easier than last time. Right, so basically I'm just going to undo this nut, because all you do is undo this nut on the outside of the shaft, and inside the shaft, on the other end of the CV shaft, you just undo all those, all those flange bolts. So, we'll just undo this, and get this end off, and then the shaft just comes out, it's really easy to do, so. sucker and that just slides out of the spline how easy is that out by you can get the three of them now and then three when we move the car a bit this is bare shaft we'll do that for a sec just get that one and then you get another one on here like this move all your stuff that you're going to break and run over later So, 
even if you carry these tools, don't forget the 36 mil nut you need. 36 mil socket, sorry, for that 36 mil nut. Even if you don't know how to use these tools, someone out the bush, you might come across who does. They can rip a, rip a shaft out for you quickly or something. It's about the right foot pounds, I reckon. Dare say I'll cop a bit of flack for that, but anyway. Okay. 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 Okay.